What is up everyone? We are back right after work and here we are. I'm wanting to talk about dopamine today because it's something that held me back for so many years. I didn't know what it was until I went into this rabbit hole of dopamine, of learning how to control it, not allowing spikes so that I have a good baseline and I'm actually motivated to do the things that I want to do. I don't push off working out. I don't push off this coaching thing. I don't push off getting things that I want to get done. And I think that's solely because of my good baseline level of dopamine. So let's get into it. There is a dark side of dopamine that I feel like some people know about and some people don't. But before we dive too far into it, I want to talk about what dopamine actually is. Because whenever people hear dopamine, they automatically think, oh, reward drug. It's the reward drug in your brain. Part of that is true, but I like to think of it in a different fashion. And it's not just that I think that, it's true. It, it is backed by science. But so dopamine is the brain chemical that drives motivation and reward and all that. But it's not just the pleasure drug, right? It's the spark, it's the drug, the chemical that you need to actually go take action to go do something that will bring a reward. So when your dopamine rises, you feel good, focused, driven, energized, you just feel great overall. When it's low, everything feels like shit, you feel terrible, and life just feels pointless and boring, and that's when you begin to question, what am I even doing with my life? Oh, and I did include studies on this because I know that some science nerds are gonna think I'm just making all this shit up, uh, but it's true stuff, so hear me out. So like I was saying earlier, people tend to think that dopamine is just the happiness drug, right? People think, oh, if I go do this, I'm gonna get a flood of dopamine and I'm gonna feel great. And part of that is true, but I like to think of uh, dopamine more so as the motivation chemical than it is the reward chemical. Serotonin and a combination of some other chemicals in your brain are what actually bring that satisfaction feeling, that reward feeling after you do something. So I put the example of going to the gym because we all know that going to the gym after you do it makes you feel good. Dopamine is what actually drives you to go to the gym. Dopamine is what's telling you, hey, if I do this thing, I will get a reward later. So dopamine is what drives you to do the thing. Serotonin is that feeling you get after you do the thing. So for this example, after you leave the gym, you're walking out, you notice how pretty it is outside. Maybe you get in the car, you roll your windows down, listen to music, you feel really good. Maybe you go get a, you know, coffee or something, if it's in the morning, whatever, and you just feel good, you just feel happy. That is more so serotonin and a couple other chemicals, but dopamine is what drove you to go to that gym because dopamine knows that it will bring a reward later. This is why cheap dopamine, and we'll get into this, but like scrolling, snacking, all that, can break your motivation and your focus because it gives you the reward aspect. It gives you that serotonin with barely any work. So what do I mean by cheap dopamine? This is just the, and I feel like a lot of people can guess what cheap dopamine is just from the name, but think of it as social media, processed foods, entertainment. I don't know why I put drugs and drinking in, well, I guess drugs and drinking can be entertainment, but anything that doesn't require work, you can get it really, really fast, and it brings this huge spike of serotonin, of dopamine, of endorphins into your brain where people tend to ruin themselves when it comes to dopamine, serotonin, or endorphins, all that, is when they get these quick spikes. Because a spike, think of a line, spike, well, you're gonna come back down. And that shit's gonna suck ass. And so when you get all these spikes, your baseline is just ruined. So then your brain starts chasing these easy hits. So here's a study from University of Copenhagen, and I didn't include the link, y'all can go look them up if you don't believe me. but. Uh, this university found that social media trains the brain to seek short-term reward. So if you're trying to chase something like a good physique, a business, hell, even just climbing the ladder at your job or whatever, that's going to require long-term focus. It's a long-term reward. And so if your brain is always seeking these cheap, quick, short-term rewards, then it's never going to be able to lock down and grind in order to reach those. So I talked about it more here, right? You get this quick hit of social media, drunk food, whatever, spikes your dopamine, spikes your serotonin. 
these are these repeated spikes lower your baseline levels of dopamine and serotonin you need more just to feel normal and then real goals that are worth chasing feel boring and too difficult when tiktok first came out i think i had a screen time of like six or seven hours a day and i can promise you that that time in my life was also the most unproductive time of my life I'm very ambitious, have all these goals that I want to chase. I feel like everyone does, but I always just said, oh, I'll get to it later or, or, oh, it'll come to me. And that's where everyone gets it wrong. And I feel like social media makes you feel special. It makes you believe that, oh, it'll just come to me because you see it all the time when it's really, that's not how it works. So like I was saying about how, when you spike your dopamine like that, you ruin the baseline of your normal dopamine levels. So they did a brain scan on people that have obesity, people that eat processed food all the time, getting these constant, constant spikes of dopamine, spikes of dopamine, spikes of dopamine, and found they have fewer dopamine receptors. That has occurred over time of eating all this shitty food that gives you these huge dopamine spikes. So now whenever they eat McDonald's, they think, yeah, it's just another meal, it's whatever. Where you take a guy that's only eaten, I don't know, meat and fruit his entire life you give him mcdonald's he's gonna like think it's the craziest shit ever because he has more dopamine receptors his baseline of dopamine is higher so how would social media addicts be any different dopamine wise serotonin wise from obese people you are just stripping away dopamine receptors every single day every scroll that you do and this is why you can't focus the portion of your brain, and I'm no scientist, I don't want to try to act like I'm all smart and sciencey, but I have done research about this for a couple of years. Your brain is divided into sections. There's a prefrontal cortex that's right in the front of your brain, and that is responsible for your focus, your decision making, and all the above. Your dopamine depends on that prefrontal cortex. When you overload this with stimulation, it cannot concentrate, and if you want to achieve anything in your life, you need concentration, you need focus, you need to be able to sit on one task for a long period of time. And so like I was talking about before, when it comes to the obese people study, there's a newer study that shows heavy social media use shrinks attention span and increases impulsivity. All that means is now you now you become addicted to these short dopamine spikes. So now whenever you sit down and do a task that's hard, you want to work on a business for a couple hours, you want to read for an hour, you wanna go work out. Well, now it's like, you can start, sure, but within five minutes, you're gonna pick up your phone. Within five minutes, you're gonna go hit your vape. Within five minutes, you're gonna be doing some other shit that does not matter. Because you trained your brain to constantly be looking for novelty. Now, working out is hard. I'm not saying it's easy. But, I feel like nowadays, when people struggle to go to the gym, I would say at least 50% of that issue results from low dopamine baseline. Because like I was saying, you're training your brain to expect effortless reward. So it makes hard but meaningful tasks like going to the gym, starting a business, working on your goals, whatever, feel too hard. Or for me, it was just straight up too boring. I was like, I'd rather just go drink or go walk, you know, watch TikTok or something. It kills your drive to do anything great. And I think we can all agree we want to be great. We want to do something big with our lives. It's the same with junk food. I'm not just shitting on social media. There's other cheap dopamine too. I feel like this is a given, but Harvard did a study where they found that ultra processed foods were addictive as well as they didn't fill people for long. So you crave it more, you move less, and you feel like shit, and you definitely have no motivation, no dopamine to go to the gym every day. Now you can reverse this, you can fix it. I know you can because I've done it myself. You have to build a brain, and really I should have put, you have to build a lifestyle that craves progress. Too many people online want to do a dopamine detox where they detox from their phone, music, basically anything for a day, for three days, for a week. And they do that, they don't feel good because you have to think you're going to go through withdrawals basically because you've been addicted to this stuff. Your baseline of dopamine has to rise again so it's going to feel like shit. So they do these, they, they put themselves through misery for a day, three days, a week, and then they hop right back onto what they were doing. Nothing changed. This is something where, and y'all can read the screen, I tell you like cut out all this shit, add better stuff to your life. You can't just do this for a day, three days, or a week and expect to feel amazing, 
get all this shit done and your life just changed forever. This is something that takes a decent amount of time to change. I would say two to three months to actually notice like, hey, I'm, I've am i been getting a lot of shit done or hey, I've started reading and, and enjoying it and I never enjoyed it before. Hey, I really enjoyed going lifting weights now. It takes about two to three months to do that. That's why I say build a lifestyle that craves progress. So limit your social media use to 30 minutes a day. Or if you really want to see progress even faster, none at all. Now I said fill this time because too many people want to get rid of social media. They delete Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever, cold turkey. And they think, oh, I'm going to change my life. But then they don't add anything in their life to fill that time. So they're just sitting there watching the paint dry. And within five minutes, they go back on social media. Like, yeah, what'd you expect? Your dopamine levels are still fucked up. You are going to have to fill this time with something to keep your mind occupied because your little lizard TikTok brain needs something to do. Replace shitty food with protein and fruit. I'm not saying eat bland food though. Don't go eat chicken breast. Just straight chicken. That's stupid. You're not going to be able to stick to that. I wouldn't even be able to stick to that. Go eat steaks and fruit is good, but go make a good like taco bowl or make some like Mexican style, you know, chicken breast or chicken nuggets, whatever grilled. Make it good tasting. And also stop chasing constant entertainment. Being bored isn't a bad thing. And we'll get into that in a second. Instead, replace this with walks, deep work where you don't have any tabs open except for what you're working on. You can do it with no music. You can't have music. I don't think music's that bad. Start reading, lifting weights, doing something hard. All And don't get me wrong, all this sucks at first. It's not fun. When you first start doing this, it's terrible. You are going through withdrawals. I put quotes around because it's not actual withdrawals, but you know what I mean. It's not fun at first, but that's why I say you have to build a lifestyle. And I promise you within two to three months of doing this, like your life will change. You will like to do hard things. You will enjoy doing hard things. There's a study here that exercise increases dopamine production and receptor sensitivity. All that means is your brain learns to work for its reward again. It learns that, hey, if I do this hard thing, I'm going to get this reward. All of this is about building a stable baseline of dopamine. No spikes. Now, I wanted to get into this because too many people shit on being bored. And I know it's not the most fun thing. That's why it's called being bored. But hear me out. When you're bored, this part of your brain activates and it's linked to creativity and reflection. What I always like to think of is think about the great Americans, the Americans that have changed the culture forever. The guys back in the day, Benjamin Franklin, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Edison, all those guys, they were bored pretty often. You know, Winston Churchill, Napoleon Hill. I can promise you that they had moments of boredom in their life, but that is what sparks the creativity because they weren't overstimulated to come up with great ideas, to find the motivation to go do things. And that's why they became greats. When you flood your mind with this stimulation, with this information, you don't give your brain time to slow down and think for itself. And having space to think is so, so important. And I believe it sets you forward ahead of the competition in today's world. I'll leave you with this. If you're always tired, if you're always unfocused, if you just feel like you're stuck, you're not making any progress in your life. It's not that you're lazy. Too many people label themselves as lazy. It's just that your brain has been fucked from cheap dopamine. You have to trade these fast hits, these dopamine spikes for real effort because that is what brings change in your life. And you have to create a lifestyle behind it because like I said earlier, it takes two to three months to really see change. It takes two to three months for your brain to really rewire. Your focus completely transforms. Your motivation completely transforms. Your body will automatically transform when you're eating healthier, you're going to the gym. And for a lot of you, your mood is gonna go through the roof. When you're stuck inside on social media all day, you're gonna be anxious, you're gonna be unhappy. But when you actually get outside, you get off of social media, your mood skyrockets. I talked about ways to actually go about changing how you operate on your daily life to implement this in my other videos. So if you wanna know how to do that, go watch those. But I really made this just so you would understand why I constantly say things like limit your social media use, you know, control what foods that you're eating, 
control the information that you're consuming because you are what you eat and you are what you consume. When you do this for two to three months, you'll start to realize that when you actually suck it up and just start doing the work that you've been putting off, you are actually a much happier person than before when you did push off that work. It's like Chris Williamson says, the magic is in the work that you've been avoiding. So I hope this video helped you understand why I always preach to control your dopamine sources and control your daily lifestyle. But for now, I'm gonna quit blabbering and I'll see you on the next one.